This is the grade 8 math practice test for TN Ready. Right now, it's question number 8 in the 1920 version, maybe something else later. Um, so, the value of an irrational number expression is estimated to be between 18 and 19, which could be the expression. I will say I hate this question just because it's super confusing and can be long. It's a really odd way to go after the standard, but whatever. That's just how it goes. Um, to do this, I'm going to have you have to have a general understanding of a few things. The first is just to sort of get a feel for like the roots. So obviously one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine. We're gonna use this information in the reverse to create a little chart for ourselves. The square root of one is one. The square root of four is two and the square root of 9 is 3. Now we're going to use this to our advantage, and I'm going to make a huge leap here, and instead of trying to figure out things and burning time, I'm going to say if anything is between the square root of 1 and the square root of 4, I'm going to refer to it as 1.5. If anything is between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9, I'm going to refer to it as 2.5. Is this the best method to do this? Who knows? But it is a method that you can do and actually save time doing it. The other thing that you have to understand is that the square root here is countered by squaring. So the square root of 2, because it's this is a 2 here, and you can rewrite this as 2 to the 1 half power. It's a whole thing. Anyway, the opposite of square root is squaring it. So every time we take a square root and square it, we end up with the radicand as an actual whole number integer answer. So you get a 2. That's important. So we have this two, square root of 2 to the ninth. So what that really means is square root of 2 times square root of 2 times square root of 2 times square root of 2. And I'm going to sort of stop saying it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, because multiplying, again, the square root of a number times itself gives me the actual value in the radicand, I can just look for pairs. Like, here's a pair, here's a pair, here's a pair, and here's a pair. So when I have these, each group, this becomes a 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And we'll talk about the square root of 2 in just a minute. So we're going to multiply these out. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 more is 8, times 2 more is 16. Now, I said earlier that depending on where it was, we would apply a value to it. So the square root of 2 is between the square root of 1 and the square root of 4, so we're going to make that 1.5. So 16 times 1.5. Eight plus six is fourteen. Plus one more is twenty-four. That's the value, relatively speaking, of this number. That is not between eighteen and nineteen, so I can mark that out because I just want to keep track of it. I'm going to put that twenty-four over here just so I can see it later. And again, this is not the most eloquent way to do this, but it is a way to do it that can get you to the answer. Now, three to the fifth means square root of three five times, and we're multiplying them all together. Now we're going to pair them up. So we'll end up with square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is 3, times 3, times, and we have that one leftover one. So 3 times 3 is 9, square root of 3. Again, it's between 1 and 4, so our ineloquent solution is to multiply by 1.5. Thirteen point five is not between eighteen and nineteen. Mark that out. And now that's gonna drive me nuts. I thought I could fix it, but I couldn't. Alright, so now it's time for the next one. Square root of six times the square root of six is just six. 
Now, we have to look, well, where's the square root of 6 go? Well, it's between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9, so we're, again, going to apply our really sort of not great s strategy and put 2.5 there. So 6 times 2.5. Why would I write it there? I had a ton of space, and I just wasted it. Okay, there we go. 15. Again, not really that close. Even if you round it up, how would my pen go? I must hit the back button on this pen. Um, so it's 14, even if I round it up. So it's around 14. So let's look at the last one. Here's a pair, so that's 7. And again, square root of 7 is between these two numbers, so we'll do times 2.5. Seventeen point five. Not exactly the best of matches, but if I'm looking for numbers between eighteen and nineteen, at least I could round it up to the nearest whole number and it would get me to eighteen. So around eighteen. So I'm gonna think that this is definitely the closest because this is way over, under, under, and then here. So my answer to number eight is D. This is not the most eloquent solution, but it's better than nothing. So it gives you some area to work with. The important thing here is if you are doing, uh, if you're raising these numbers in their square roots, it's kind of nice, I guess, in some ways, um, you can group them together and start pulling out integers or whole numbers and uh, work up from there. So it gives you just one single multiplication that's not super complicated, um, and it can get you to a reasonable answer. This explanation took about seven minutes. Actually doing it doesn't take that long, but it does take some time. So this might be one that if you're taking the test, you kind of mark it um, and then come back to it later. And if you have time, spend your time on it. But don't burn tons of minutes trying to get this right. It's okay as a test taker to say, you know what, I don't have the time to dedicate to that right now. I'm going to go get the ones that I do know and then come back. Getting focused on trying to get them all right is a great way to look like you don't know nearly as much as you do. So be smart about how you handle these types of questions.